It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Conversations with Joan focuses on topics that are important to your life, from health and wellness to professional development to personal well-being. Changemakers join me to share their insights, tips, and strategies so you can thrive and live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Now, let's start talking. Many of us believe that our genes doom us to the disorders that run in our families. But today's guest, Dr. Ben Lynch, believes that with the right plan in place, we can optimize our physical and mental health and ultimately rewrite our genetic destiny. Dr. Lynch is the best-selling author of Dirty Genes and president of Seeking Health, a company that helps educate both the public and health professionals on how to overcome genetic dysfunction. Welcome, Dr. Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Awesome to be here, Joan. So, Doctor, you are a doctor of naturopathic medicine, and I want to start off by talking a little bit about you and how you got interested in focusing on genetics. Well, it's years, years ago, the, the seed was planted when I was just a kid, and I remember I was about 17 years old, and I was standing in the hallway, and my stepmom was talking with someone, uh, one of her friends, and my stepmom looked at me, and she said, you know, uh, schizophrenia uh, runs in your family. And uh, it really tends to show its head when you become a teenager, you know, an adolescent adult, uh, you know, a young adult. And I, I'm thinking here okay, in my head, well, that's uh, about a year from now. So I'm just going to wake up one day as a schizophrenic. Uh, that made me very uncomfortable. So, you know, right then and there, it was uh, planted in. And then I also heard, you know, many, many, many times growing up, well, alcoholism runs in your family. So, you know, you're next man, you know, this, I, I don't think I'm going to become an alcoholic. And thankfully, I'm now 46. I'm, I'm neither schizophrenic. I'm neither uh, an alcoholic. And, you know, I do have moments of, of mental uh, craziness like we all do, especially this year 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it, it kind of showed up again in the clinic later on in life when I realized I wasn't the only one having these same thoughts. Um, and also when doctors would apply the same exact treatments for depression or anxiety or heavy metal uh, chelations um, or environmental removal of various uh, you know, compounds that people were exposed to, they'd use the same treatments, but other people would either do very poorly or they would do better or they would do nothing, no change. But they had the same symptoms. They had the same exposures. So what's different was in my head. And uh, I started thinking, well, genetics must be a component, and it definitely is. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that, because what you just described, as you said, so many of us feel that way, that we think, you know, for me, for example, my mother had heart disease, my father had lung cancer. So, you know, if I was taking the genetic standpoint, I would say to myself, the odds are I may have heart disease or lung cancer. So that's the way many of us think and and what we believe, but the science of epigenetics proves otherwise. So can you explain to us a little bit more about how all of this works and the power that we actually have? 100%. And I I just want to quickly state right now for people that we have genetic susceptibilities to schizophrenia or cancer or, you know, various other common conditions, you know, hypertension and so on. But if you know what those susceptibilities are ahead of time, and then you look at your genes and you're understanding your genetics, then you say, okay, well, these are my, these are where my susceptibilities are. This is what I need to do with them. So let, let's put a very simple thing. People use car analogies all the time, right? So if, if, you, if you walk into your car and you see that your right rear wheel is a bit low, do you think you're going to be going the same speed limit as you normally would? Are you going to be cutting corners and turning sharp? You know, or are you going to look at that and take an action and say, you know what, I can't pump up my tire right now, but I'm going to drive this somewhat gingerly. When I go around corners, I'm going to take it a bit easier. And then when I finally get to the gas station, insert those quarters and, and you know, fill up the, the hole in the tire, you know, I should be good. But, you know, is that the real fix or do I actually need to go and fix the tire even better or, or is that it? And I just need to keep an eye on that and keep pumping uh, air in the tire. That's the same thing. 
And that tire has a job to do. The, the job of that tire is to keep that car moving in a safe forward, you know, safe direction, uh, in a safe way. Our genes are the same. They have jobs to do, and they have to function at their best. And when genes don't have the tools or the resources to function at their best, they can't. And so what happens is other genes step up to compensate for that one particular gene, like the three other tires in that one car will compensate and, and help the car move forward even better than that one flat one. But over time, those compensating genes are going to get overworked and they too will start failing. So ultimately, what you need to do is figure out which genes are susceptible and then you take action and the epigenetics, as you said earlier, the, the genes get their instructions from you for the most part. Yeah, we have maybe, you know, a certain hair color. You know, I'm brown hair and I have hazel eyes and I have lighter skin. You know, that is genetically hard-coded in my body. Done. Fixed. I can't change that. But what you can change is how you're thinking, how you're moving um, in terms of uh, energy and your ability to fall asleep at night, to wake up in the morning. All these things are very, very adaptable and agile. Well, and that gives us a lot of power, doctor, because like you're saying, we have, you know, we start out with the genetic blueprint, but then we can control our environment, our thoughts, our food, our movement, our sleep. That really does give us so much control over the way we live. Yeah. I mean, how many of us use Google Maps, you know, or, or Apple Maps when we're driving? Mm -hmm. And you have your usual route to get to, to work or, you know, vacation and you're, you're doing these things, but you're checking, you know, and oftentimes my wife goes, well, why are you using Google Maps? I said, I've told you, honey, you know, I use it because sometimes there's an accident up ahead and I will use an alternate route. So, you know, you have the ability. We have maps. You know, our genes is, are hard coded in our body, but we have the ability to understand once we can see them you know, where the sticky points are. And, and if there is a sticky point there, can we optimize the function of that sticky point and clean it up? Or do we have to go around an alternate way if that one particular gene is really, really stuck and not, you know, able to get cleaned up? There's alternate routes. The body is inherently beautiful and brilliant because there's so much redundancy in the system. So if something fails, there's a backup. And if there's that fails, there's typically another backup. So Things are, things are really good. We have to really, really dirty our genes in order for us to get symptoms. And a lot of us tell our bodies to shut up when we get those symptoms. Headache, you take mm -hmm. a NSAID. You know, fever, you take something, knock the fever down. Depression, you take an antidepressant. You get an infection, you take an antibiotic. You hear the anti, anti, anti. It's all against the body. Start supporting your body and start seeing great things. We're in the midst of a pandemic right now. And everything that we're talking about from a genetic standpoint it can help us keep our immune system strong and therefore fight off these viruses and colds and, and things that are out there attacking us. Yeah, I'm kind of shadow banned right now on social media because, uh, you know, I'm sharing research that the main, uh, you know, who knows, uh, doesn't like. So, you know, I made a post which is kind of inflammatory. Uh, I'll, I'll grant that that, you know, we think the virus is killing us. And it's, it's not the virus that's killing us. It's our own immune system that's mm -hmm. responding to the viral infection. Viruses aren't even alive. You know, let's start there. And if, if we are so worried about COVID-19 as a population, as a civilization, then we need to really back up and look and say, okay, what's really going on here? Why are we really getting hammered? And who is getting hammered? And why are they getting hammered? And what can we do to truly support them? Because masking up and quarantining is not a real long-term solution. So what is the long-term solution? The long-term solution is identifying the weak points, what these genetic uh, issues are, what are the susceptibilities, and what actions can they as individuals take to support those particular genes. And the, there's a plethora of things that you can do. And um, what happens with, with COVID-19 and, and infections in general, you know, let's just talk about in general, you get an infection, your body will slowly recognize it, hopefully, some people can't even recognize the infection, but the body will recognize the infection. It will trigger the immune response to start making cells, which will kill that said infection. And then the infection will get killed, and then the body will mount a repair response. The problem with COVID is the, the body will mount an immune response, and then it will keep mounting it and keep mounting it and keep mounting it until it's just insane. And now the body is in a hyperimmune state where it is just attacking self. 
and that's where you get the water filled, you know, filling in your lungs, you get the pneumonia and uh, the horrible headaches and so on. So, you know, if you know that you can take action and support your immune system from attacking itself by using things like vitamin D and glutathione. When you talk about COVID, we all feel like we're so helpless and everybody's sitting back waiting for a vaccine and vaccines are wonderful. So let me say that up front, but we're sitting back waiting for some magic bullet, which is, you know, it seems to be our mentality on so many lifestyle disorders, rather than doing what you're saying and getting ourselves into top fighting form and combating the high blood pressure and the diabetes and, and all of those things that are making us sick to begin with, we're waiting for some magic to come and do the job, where it's really, you know, it sounds simple, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's getting to the root cause. It's keeping ourselves in the best health that we can be in. Yeah. And, and you know, when you, when you stay, you know, it is a lot of work and, you know, it, it could be, um, it could be, and, you know, but it can be as simple as getting out in the sun more. Mm-hmm. I mean, the vitamin D levels at the peak of COVID were the lowest in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, it hit us, you know, somewhere in late, what was it, late January, February, March, you know, in those months, it's all a blur at this point. Um, but it, it hit us when our vitamin D levels were naturally low because we're indoors, we're staying warm, and the sun is not at its peak. So, you know, if we supplement with vitamin D, our immune system is more balanced. Vitamin D is a steroid hormone. Vitamin D is very, very powerful. It not only supports the immune system in, in surveying and um, fighting infections, but it also says at the same time, hey, now let's not get too crazy and attack ourselves. And vitamin D also supports insulin levels. And we can see that diabetics are at risk here and obesity is at risk. And if you're obese, your vitamin D is more in your fat than it's in your blood and your immune system. So now you've diluted your vitamin D levels because, you know, a lot of that vitamin D, since it's fat soluble, is hanging out in your fat. So, you know, losing weight, balancing your blood sugar, these are massively important. And getting out in the sun more is also really important. But just taking a few drops of vitamin D, you know, you know, 5,000 IUs a day um, for adults typically, and then measuring and getting your levels up above 30 um, for vitamin D is, is, is not difficult. But health is a four-letter word, as I clearly state in the book, Dirty Genes, W-O-R-K. Why do you think so many doctors today are not prescribing more of a natural way for healing? Why are they so stuck on going the pharmaceutical route at all costs? Honestly, because they're forced to. The The medical schools, the education um, is all leaning towards big pharma and big food. Um, and when they get into practice, the insurance companies um, and the licensing bodies uh, require doctors practice in a certain manner. And how do I know this information? Well, one, I'm a licensed primary care physician here in the, in the United in the Washington State, so I am a you know, practicing um, where I'm a licensed physician. I don't see patients anymore, but I maintain my licensure. So, and I would give uh, conferences to 300 plus health professionals who would fly in from all over the world to attend my conferences, and they'd be MDs, DOs, DCs, RNs, you know, what have you. It didn't matter. Um, and we came in one room under one roof. And we all wanted the same thing. We all wanted to help autistic children. We all wanted to help, um, you know, men, women uh, with hypertension and or pregnancy issues or what have you. It didn't matter. And we all wanted to help them, you know, using the most natural methods possible. Doctor after doctor after doctor uh, would come up to me as an MD and say, I try to implement in this practice, uh, this, this stuff in my practice, and I, the board um, comes after my license. Um, or my license has been revoked, or, you know, the insurance companies are dropping me. So they are, they go to, into medicine because they want to help people, and then they are forced into a system that doesn't let them do it the way they actually want to. It's the way they have to. And um, it, it's very, very unfortunate, and it's very, it's awful for the patient because, you know, we, we get mad at these doctors for doing that, and we try to find doctors who will do the will utilize natural methods, but truly they are hogtied, handcuffed, and uh, I, I hear it constantly. Is there anything that we as healthcare consumers can do to help make change? Yes, your wallet, your wallet. You know, it's, it's wherever you spend your money is where resources go ultimately. 
if you really believe that the ice bucket challenge is for the better good of, of people, then you're going to give money for that, right? But ultimately what you're doing is you're giving money to drug companies to you know, continue drug development and they get richer. If instead you understand that um, there's other organizations or other companies that go about things in a different way, in a more natural way, and you give them your money that direction, you're going to make change. So it's, it's down to your wallet. And if you walk in the grocery store and you are buying um, you know, foods that are sprayed with pesticides and herbicides, you're supporting that industry. If you don't, then you're not. So you, know, you don't think you have an impact. You have a massive impact. And that's one thing that I've been shadow banned on social media for is because I've been speaking up just like I'm speaking up here on your show. And I appreciate you, um, you know, permitting that, Joan. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's uh, you, you got to speak up and you speak up with your money and just shop uh, accordingly. And I understand that some of these things are expensive, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's not so many companies own so many different things. It's harder. Um, so it, it's, it's not easy. Well, and I think a theme of this conversation is is that we are powerful, whether it be in maintaining our health or enacting change. We do have the power to do something, even when we do feel powerless. And and that kind of leads me to my next question, because my brand is change your attitude, change your life. So I believe in the power of thoughts and, and what we believe we can do or achieve, accomplish. Can you explain from a medical perspective, what happens when we have negative thoughts, what does that do to our body? How does our perception affect our genes? Well, let's, let's go through this ex exercise a little bit right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening, you know, close your eyes, unless you're driving, don't do that. <laughs> um, so just imagine yourself, um, you just uh, heard from your boss or you got a, okay, you know, if you're running your own company that people can run it for you and you just got a two month all expenses paid vacation to anywhere in the world with anyone you want. How does that make you feel? Peaceful. There's a, like a, a real calming feeling that's just running through my body right now. Yeah. So I'm doing the same thing. I feel lighter. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm almost levitating. You know, I'm sitting down and my whole chest and my arms, everything in my head even just got light. Now, um, and and uh, like you said, in my hands, wow, my hands got hot. So my hands got nice and warm, okay? Now you're driving down the freeway and you, there's traffic in everywhere. Somebody just cut you off, just slammed on the brakes right in front of you. You reacted and now that's not it. You've got this police car that's got its lights on behind you. You look in your rear mirror and they're motioning you to pull over. Now how do you feel? I immediately felt um, a tightening around my chest, and then I started to feel a tensing coming up my legs, tightening and, right. and like a throb almost. Exactly. So we went from a more outward, lighter, um, you know, more peaceful to a tighter, you know, more internal fighting position and ready to spring. Okay. And so what happened there is floods of chemicals were just released that fast based upon our conversation. And what happened is we released either, um, you know, uh, histamine or dopamine or norepinephrine um, or epinephrine in, in varying amounts. And when you get stressed out, these release in way higher amounts. Histamine gets released and then that triggers, you know, inflammatory uh, responses, um, which then single your body to do other things and you your, your muscles get ready to go now. And, and your, so does your brain. So you can really focus in an acute tense situation so you can make quicker, faster judgment. You know, when you, if you ever get in a car wreck or, or a bike wreck and you're flying through the air and you can actually make decisions as you're flying through the air, even though it seems like a minute, right? But it's actually a millisecond. Well, that's because you have a huge amount of neurotransmitters in your brain right now, allowing that moment in time, to go on forever. So you've flooded your brain with massive amounts of neurotransmission in acute situations. And is that good? Yeah, it's great during an acute situation, but if you keep doing that on a chronic, if you have chronic daily stress, it's demanding to make those neurotransmitters because it requires nutrients, which you're consuming every single day, i.e. mainly from protein, 
and vitamin B6 and B12 and folate gets consumed at a massive level. Choline gets consumed at a massive level. And then when you break these neurotransmitters down, they break down also requiring uh, nutrients that you're consuming. So these genes are working to produce the neurotransmitters. They're working to transport them and they're working to eliminate them. And with everything, it requires nutrients. And you get that stuff from your food and from your supplements. And so the more stressed you are, the more catabolic or more hard work your body has to do. If you're the go-to person in your company and your boss or your manager keeps coming up to you and say, hey, you know what, you know, Joan, you're doing an amazing kick butt job, you know, and I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you this because you're my A player and now I'm going to give you this. And now what happens? You go from the A player to the B player because now you're overworked but you have A quality and they keep coming at you. Now somebody else in the company found out that you're the amazing player and they're the C rated employee, but you know, they found that you're the, you're the, the goat, you know, I'm going to go to Joan and give her all the stuff. So the C player starts dumping their stuff on you and you get it done and you give it back to them. That C player has gone up to a B player. You've actually gone from an A to a C. Now that everybody stops going to you and you actually, you're starting to go back to your productive self and you move yourself back to an A player and they come back to you again. See what I'm doing here? It's the ebb and flow. So if you keep leaning on a certain gene on your body for something, maybe you're, you're, you've been on the couch and you want to train more and overtraining is a huge issue that's undiscussed. It needs to happen more. People are overtraining and making themselves sick. Overtraining is demanding. So you have to understand that your genes have jobs to do and in order to do those jobs, they have tools. Those tools come from your food and from supplements, and you cannot overdo it. The book is Dirty Genes, a breakthrough program to treat the root cause of illness and optimize your health. If you'd like to get more information about Dr. Lynch and his work, you can visit drbenlynch.com. That's D-R, drbenlynch.com. Or as always, you can visit our website, cyacyl.com. Doctor, in about 30 seconds or less, what's the takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? change your mind, change your health. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Um, and, you know, mindset truly is everything. If you believe that you can, you take a step forward going towards that goal. If you believe you can't, you just stay where you are. So believe that you can do it. Mindset is truly everything. And I know it's a really scary, but just apply it to the simplest thing. Maybe, you know, you believe that, uh, you know, you can't feel better from Uh, changing your diet. Well, your next bite today, your next bite, make it a healthy one. Dr. Lynch, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. This is Conversations with Joan. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.